Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? Hello, my Level Up family. This podcast is going to be released on the Monday before Mother's Day. And so it really hit my heart to talk to all the mamas out there building a business to t- today. So as moms, we wear a lot of hats. We really do. Like I say all the time, my kids like, where are you? I'm like, I'm in the laundry room. I am a maid. I am a chef. I am a person who does laundry. I'm a person who carpools. I'm a, I, I wear a many, many hats. Okay. And I want to share my story with you. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't, but my goal today is that you feel the gift of building your business for your kids. So my story, I was in corporate America. I worked in corporate America for about eight years. And I was one of those women who I just didn't understand stay-at-home moms. Okay. So like I'm in a business now where I like teach like why we don't judge and what it means when we judge. So there was no personal growth in my life. And I was one of those women who didn't understand stay-at-home moms. So realize at this point in my life, I was not a mom yet. And once again, like that reminder, don't take advice or an opinion from someone who isn't in your shoes. Like who, what what am I shouting opinions? Even though I didn't say that opinion out loud, what am I shouting it out from the bleachers, right? I was sitting up in the bleachers of life thinking to myself, who's going to give up their professional life to be, to stay, to stay at home and like do what? Okay. Again, judging. Then I had my first baby, Brooke. And I did not have a plan B. So our, I didn't have choices. I had to go back to work. Our home ran on two incomes. That was the life that we had built. Like financially, we needed two incomes. Once again, another lesson, live beneath your means, live on one income. Okay. So I had three months off when I gave birth to Brooke, three months of paid leave. And for three months, instead of living in the moment, now I did have an amazing three months. Okay. But I definitely cried at least once a day. Like I've got to leave my baby. And so what happened is I, and I went back to work and I was very blessed. I was very fortunate. My mom, I lived about three miles from my mother she watched Brooke. She would even come over if Brooke was sleeping when I left for work. So I didn't have to bundle her up. I didn't have to take her to daycare. Like I was really blessed, but that didn't mean that I, I didn't miss her. Right. But I, I missed her first word. I missed her first step. You know how many times I'd say, listen, mommy's going to work today. I'll be home at six. You haven't spoken yet. If you're going to speak today, hold it off till 630, right? So I missed her first word. I missed her first step. And quite honestly, I think her first word was Nana, because my mother was sitting all day saying, Nana loves you. Nana, 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 which again, I'm so blessed I had my mom, but I think it was Nana, okay? Because I was at work. So I was now pregnant with my second child, Tyler. And at that point in my life, I walked away from my job. So on paper, I was married at the time and we, we worked out numbers and we're like, okay, like we can make it work if you stay home. And here's a little FYI, making it work and thriving are two totally different things. Okay. When you're making it work, you're like, looking at every nickel that you spend. This is exactly what I would spend on food for the week. And then all of a sudden, if somebody wants to come over on a Saturday for a barbecue, I was like, well, that wasn't in the plan. Okay. And so ask yourself, are you getting by or are you thriving? Do you have the time and money to live life on your terms? Ask yourself these questions. Can you afford to send your children to college? Can you afford to travel? Is money a focus and a discussion in your household? Meaning like, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be somewhat of a focus, right? Like I, I still believe in budgeting. I believe in saving before I spend, but like, is it a discussion, like a scarcity discussion? Like there's just not enough and something's got to give. Are you saving money every month? Are you planning for retirement? 
If something were to happen to the main source of income in your household, how long can you survive on what you have saved? These questions kept coming up for me. So this was us living on one income. So now fast forward in my life, I'm now a mama to four children and you guys know me. And if you've listened to even one of my episodes, you know how much I love my kids. My kids are my why, my kids are my joy. Being home with them was magical and special. I'm now a full-time stay-at-home mom now. With that said, I was looking for things for me to make money, okay? not I didn't have a profession at this time. I walked away from my career. And so what I was, I was watching seven kids under the age of five in my home. Okay. I was also working for a financial planner on the side, making appointments for him. Cause I like, I didn't mind reaching out. I believed in the products he was selling. I believe in life insurance and all of these things that I had no issue calling people up and scheduling appointments for him. And he was at the time paying me $25 an hour. So I was happy to do it. I was home with my kids. Okay. So I loved being a stay at home mom. I was making money, but there was something missing. And so I was going to bed every single night and I was praying like, and I, like a prayer, almost like a conversation, like, God, I prayed for this. Like I prayed for the opportunity to be a stay at home mom. First, I was that mom that didn't think I wanted it. Then I was the mom that was praying for it. I'm now home with my kids. Why am I feeling this is enough and isn't enough? Like what's wrong with me? I love my kids so much. But here's the reality, my reality. Might not be your reality. A part of me had died. The part of Debbie Neal with the fire, the drive, the passion for growth, the competitive part. I wasn't growing. I wasn't expanding. I wasn't evolving. And let me tell you, no matter what relationship you think of in your life, right? It's really important to grow. It's important to grow with your partner. It's important to grow with your kids. It's important to grow with your friends, right? Because the definition of insanity is doing the exact same thing and expecting a different result. So I started to dream about what the perfect profession for me would be, okay? And these these are some of the things that were on my list. I wanted to be to be able to create time to be present, I wanted a business that was merit-based. See, I'm somebody that like, I don't want everything to be even, Stephen. I want to come in and I want to know that if I work hard and if I overperform, I'm going to be rewarded for it. I don't, I don't want to be in an atmosphere that like I could be performing at the same level as Tom, Dick, and Harry sitting next to me and we're all going to stay at the exact same pay. Like I, no, I'd rather pluck my balls out. Like I want merit-based because I don't, I want to be challenged. Okay. I wanted the ability to grow. I wanted to determine my worth. I wanted, I was looking for something that would give me the ability to empower other people, to travel, to grow as a person, to become a leader, to develop leaders. I was journaling about a professional profession that would challenge me, a profession that would force me to level up. And then as I was journaling, it really hit me. You know what, Deb? I can be a great mom and also build a successful life as an entrepreneur. So I started to redefine what I thought of as a great mom. So we all have our definition. And quite honestly, it's not a matter of right and wrong. There's many moms out there. They're like, my entire life is, I just want to be home. I want to be home 24 hours a day. I want to be with my kids. I, I don't want a professional life outside of what I do. Awesome. For me, I needed to be the best version of me so I could be the best mom that I could possibly. You ever hear like the term, like you can't make somebody happy. They need to be happy with themselves. And so I'm the happiest when I feel like I'm growing and thriving and not to prove anything, but just in that constant state of evolution. So after five years of being a stay-at-home mom, this was my new definition of a stay-at-home mom. I I redefined, because sometimes we hear stay-at-home mom, like, oh, a mom stays home. They just they're home. They stay home. No. So this was my new, de- my new definition of a stay-at-home mom, present, fully present. Now, sometimes as a stay-at-home mom, we're physically there, but we're not emotionally there, right? You ever get so caught up doing laundry, cooking, and your kid's like, maybe play Legos with me or draw with me. And you're like, later, mom's busy. Mom's busy. I'm like, I need to redefine. Like, what if I manage my time better and I spent a few hours of focus time with my kids, paid somebody else to do my laundry and cooking, and then and then built a business. Okay, so fr- present, there for my kids, committing to growth. 
to me, that was a new definition of a stay-at-home mom. Like I wanted to commit to growth, becoming my best self, challenging myself, being driven. I wanted my kids to look at me for more than the mom who made their lunch and wiped their tears. Now, you guys, those are my favorite jobs. I loved making their lunches. And I didn't love when they had tears, but I loved being there. But I also realized that I kind of could be a badass also, okay? I wanted to show them how to reach for the stars. I wanted to show them what hard work looks like. Because remember, I'm developing my kids. I'm developing them into men and women. Of course, now I happen to be doing this podcast, but my children have an incredible father also. So they're blessed on both ends, but I'm just talking about me and my experiences. Okay. So I wanted to show them to to reach for the stars. I wanted to show them what hard work looks like. I wanted to inspire them to lead a yes life. And again, we have different definitions of a yes life, but yes, I can give. Yes, I can serve. Yes, I can come. Yes, I can be present. Yes, I can do that. Yes, we can go. I wanted to show them the world and traveled. I wanted them to dream big. So how can I inspire them to dream big if I had stopped dreaming? How can I inspire them to be successful if I was settling? How can I challenge their very best if I'm not pushing me to be my very best, I realize that I can't parent from the bleachers, okay? Like I wanted to parent from the field. I was ready for more. So I was a stay-at-home mom for five years and I was journaling probably for three years because the first two years I was in like stay-at-home mom bliss. I'm like, I had no job. I have no responsibilities outside of this house. I'm living the best life, okay? But then after two years, I was like, huh, I want more. Okay. So I journaled for years. I focused on what I wanted because here's the thing, what we focus on expands. I didn't focus on what I lacked. I focused on what I wanted. I was then presented with an opportunity for a business and a company on May 30th, 2006. So this episode is coming out in May. You guys, I'm super sentimental about May 30th. I'm, that's my, that's my anniversary of starting my business. And if you know what, one of the things I don't say on this podcast this often, but I often, but I am always looking for people to join my business, totally different side note, but I do believe May would be an incredible month for you to join me in this business. There's no guarantees for your success, but I'm going to tell you what I bring to the table. I don't know how to fail. Okay. So I started my business May 30th, 2006, and I've been building it ever since. So mama's If you're out there and you want to succeed, but you're torn because you also want to create success, like you want to be a great parent, but you also want to create success. I said that wrong. I'm the person today that is going to remind you that you can do both. Decide what you want your life to look like. I wanted my kids to be able to go to college without student loans. So that was my initial why. So when I started my business, Brooke was six, Tyler was four, my twins, Bailey and Ryan were one and a half. So college seemed far off. You guys, life happens in a blink. Brooke has already graduated. Tyler's graduated. Ryan and Bailey are completing their freshman year in May and they're going to have three years left of college. So that was my initial why. It drove me. My kids were my why and that why made me work. So what happens is moms, sometimes we feel guilty when we do something for ourselves, right? I know that I do. And too often we see a vision for our life. We know we are building it for our family. Then we get distracted or it gets hard. And then we make our why our excuse. So I had this like sign, this note that I kept in my office and written out was a million dollars, one comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. Okay. So I had it figured out that even with merit, I'm so blessed. My kids like all graduated top in their class. They all got merit, which is um, money that you get toward your education based on their your grades. So I knew I'd get merit with their great grades, but I knew that my kids' college education would still cost about a million dollars to put them all through college. And when mama guilt hit me, I pushed through it because I had to choose my hard. Everything in life is an exchange. I could not go out and build my business because I felt guilty leaving them, right? Don't leave that. I don't want to build my business because I, I, I don't want to feel guilty. Or I could feel worse having them take out student loans because I knew there was a way to avoid it, but I chose not to make it happen. And so my kids are college debt-free, 
all of them. Now they're older and my why has evolved and it's changed. My kids have an amazing work ethic, all of them. You know, I make them, they they have their own money and they pay for like all their social things. They want to go out with their friends. They, you know, want to put gas in their car. They want to go and I don't know what, you know, go out to eat, all those different things. Okay. But then like, as they got older, first cars to them were important to me. Do I have to? No, but I want to. Okay. Weddings will be here before you know it. They cost money. I love to travel. My why makes me work. And my kids are watching. Their future life will be impacted by the life that they grew up in. And so when we as parents have a scarcity mindset, we pass that down. So if we're constantly saying things like, we can't afford that, we can't do that, we are creating a blueprint in their mind when we aren't building our wealthy mindset. We're usually building our poor mindset and we end up passing that down. When we spend our days talking about small nonsense versus dreams, our kids are hearing that. When our kids see us reading personal growth and listening to podcasts, they're going to do the same. When our kids see us invest time to build something worthwhile, we are setting the tone and the precedent for our children. There are nights when my kids were little that I didn't tuck them in. Now, again, I they had an amazing dad and I also had live-in help. I did because I knew that I wanted to be able to, when I say lead a yes life and somebody said to me, oh my gosh, this person joined the business. Can you come here to launch them? Can you fly here? Can you do this? I want to be able to say, yeah, I can. I don't just want to dip a toe in. I can. So there were some games that I missed and sometimes they cried. I could remember my my second house that I lived in in Setauka on Long Island. It was like a door and then either side of the door were these big long windows and like a ledge that like Brooke can stand on one and Tyler can stand on the other and they would press their face up against it and and they would cry sometimes. But you know what, you guys, that didn't, they didn't cry often and it didn't last long. Everything is an exchange. I knew when I was backing it up, I was home all day. I was home all day with them. Everything was an exchange. So I, you know, I think of some of the things, you know, Brooke went away to fresh, to college freshman year. She went to St. Joseph's University she loved her college experience, but her fr- beginning of her freshman year, she had a high school boyfriend um, that she broke up with. He broke up with her, actually. She was devastated. And she picked up the phone. I was at a meeting. I remember looking at my phone. I missed like 18 calls from her. I left that meeting, went to her school, stayed with her for two days, talked with her, ate with her because eating helps everything, wiped her tears. And I was so grateful that I left some of the nights when she was little, when she didn't want me to, then those nights that she was great, there was no job that I had to go to. Same with Tyler. Tyler went his freshman year, went away to college, and it was a little bit of a growth experience for him. And, and I think everything that we grow through is so worthwhile. But there were many days that he called me up and he's like, what are you doing for lunch today? I'm like, nothing. I'm free. What are you doing for dinner tonight? nothing. I'm free. So I live in New Jersey. He went to Rutgers his freshman year. He was only about 40 minutes from me. I had created the time. And so our adult children need us. They're better young adults when they have that nurturing around from their parents. Bailey goes to school in Florida. So for example, I'm flying out April 30th, which is a Tuesday. I'm going to stay there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to fly home with her Friday, help her move her stuff into storage, go out to lunch with her every day, go out to dinner with her every day, just enjoy being in Tampa because, I mean, I could have her pack things up, put it in storage and fly home. And that's probably what would happen if I really couldn't get four days off, okay? So all of their schooling, I was home in the morning to make them breakfast. I was home when they didn't feel well. I was home when they had a snow day. I was home when they got off the bus. Now, of course, there was times that I wasn't, but the majority of the time I was. You know, my boys, actually all my kids did travel sports. You guys, if you're a traveling sport parent, you know the commitment. Some of us think we, we can't work and do travel sports. Well, I built a business and did travel sports. Okay. Because I didn't, I I just couldn't be asking people like, 
to be say, can I have off to go to my son's game now in college, college sports, four o'clock on a Wednesday, and I got to drive to it. So basically I need the day off, you know? I wanted to be that house that all the friends came to. I was always around. Now, here's a big belief too. Kids can't get into a lot of trouble when you're always around, always there to talk, always there to work through things, present. Now, being present doesn't mean that I physically wasn't there sometimes, but present means when I was there, I was there, which was 95% of the time, okay? I was always available when it mattered. And today, my kids are young adults, and my time with them is priceless. Find a vehicle to create time, because at the end of everybody's life, I would think when somebody's going to ask me if you could have one thing, anything, and I know that like I'm on my last day, my last hour, I'm probably going to say one more day one more hour, one more family get together, one more memory. I mean, as much as I love designer purses, I'm not going to lay there and say one more Louis Vuitton, right? So my time with them is priceless. Find that vehicle to create the time. Life costs money. So people say the time, money can't buy happiness. All right. I agree with that. Like if you're miserable, you're going to be miserable with money, but it does allow me to afford things to do to make money. Traveling, you know, costs money. Everything costs money. If we sit on our potential and have regrets, our kids see it. Mamas, we are molding our kids. Now that, of course, dads are molding their kids too, but, but mothers, a lot of times we have kind of like mothers and dads, we have different roles. And a lot of times the mother is the nurturing role. You can have the nurturing role and the entrepreneur role. Okay. But you know, so I don't want to exclude dads, but seeing that it's Mother's Week, I'm I just, I'm just talking a little bit extra to all the mamas out there. Being a good mom is also sticking to our word, living in our commitment. Your kids are watching. Like, don't you want to bring up kids that when you say you're going to do something, they say they're going to do something that they follow through. So it's getting back up when we fail. It's persevering when we feel defeated. It's rising after we fall. It's expanding instead of shrinking back. It's setting the goal again after we fall short of it. It's setting the next goal after we achieve one. These are life lessons that are priceless to your kids. And so when I said yes to building my business, I didn't say yes for these reasons. I said yes for the ability to earn money. But I realized that through the the journey of success, there was all these lessons that I ended up teaching them. They're watching us. And I want to share a story with you. And I'm sure that I've shared it before, but it's very, very relevant. So I took Brooke with me when I was speaking for a big event for my company in Canada. And there were thousands of people there. And Brooke saw like from day one, like day-to-day operations of my business. She saw me on my computer. She saw me on my phone. She saw meetings take place in my house. She saw me go, you know, to launch new people in the business. She saw me do presentations. But this was the first time she saw like the big picture with like thousands of people. So I want to say she was about 11 years old at the time. So at that point, I was building my business for about five years. And there were a line of incredible people after I spoke to take pictures with me. And I ended up doing that for hours. And the first hour is like, she was just that proud child. Like, this is really cool. Like these people want to meet my mom. And she was mesmerized and just so excited to stand next to me. But after a while, she was a kid, right? She's getting hungry and, and antsy. And, and so anyway, long story short, we ended up leaving. And as we walked away, she just kind of looked at me and she was like, mom, like, why did they want their picture with you? And at that point, like, first of all, I feel so blessed and honored when people ask me for pictures like it's a very, very humbling experience. But when Brooke said that, like a bit of my ego like showed up, I'm like, sweetie pie, like mom is built kind of like a pretty big business, right? And then she said, well, mom, like you said you were going to build a big business and, and you built a big business. Like you said that all along. And then she looked at me dead in the face and with so much clarity, she said, mom, you're just a mom who did what they said they were going to do. And she didn't say it to be disrespectful. And I then realized, wow, I set that standard. If I say something to my kids, they expect that of me, that I'm going to follow through. So it was normal to them what I had achieved. And so when I, I dug a little deeper with her and she's like, mom, like I have friends that are 
their moms are in your business and they say they're going to do something and, and then they don't, they just don't. And then they just don't bring it up again. And their daughters know they're watching them. Like, why do they do that? And she didn't mean it from a judgment point of view. I just want to share a child's perspective. And I actually did a, a podcast with Brooke. She was my first guest. I don't know. It came out, I believe on her birthday on 11, 14, of maybe this past year or the year before. But anyway, it's a great episode because she she talks about her perspective of me building the business. So I want to ask you this. I want to call on your, your greatness. Have you looked your kids in the face and declared victory over your business? And then like, are you creating that? Have you set a goal that you aren't hungry at the moment to achieve? Have you told them that you're earning a trip that right now you are not on target for, and you're praying that they're going to forget that you declared it. But here's what I'm going to tell you. They're not going to forget. They might not call you out on it, but they're not going to forget. Are you allowing your kids to be a distraction? Now, my kids are my world. I love them with everything I've got. My life is busy. So it's like between college and games and my daughter, Brooke, is moving again. So now she lives an hour from me. She's moving an hour even further. But none of that is a distraction or an excuse. It's my reason for growing to the next level version of me. Mamas, give yourself grace. You can be an amazing mother and build a successful business. Remember, we create what we focus on. Release the guilt. Focus on the rewards. Focus on the lessons. My kids are all thriving. They appreciate hard work. They are competitive. They are visionaries. They push themselves to be better. Brooke is a vice president in my business and in my company. How many of you would like to build your business with your children? But here's the thing. They're watching you. Give them something to join. Go out there and pave the way. Don't wait for them. Build for them. Show them what raising the bar looks like. Show them what commitment looks like. Show them how it's done. Brooke was six when I started my business. She was 19 when she joined me. There was a 13-year gap between me starting and her starting. What I did in that gap mattered. If I treated my business like a hobby she probably would have chosen getting a job over building with me. If I wasn't where I was in my level of success after all that time, she probably wouldn't have seen the magnitude of what was possible. She is the reason for her success. And I'm not taking any of that away from her. She built her business, but I paved the way. She had a path. She had a bar. And my wish for all my kids is that they build a better life than I did. We all want better for our kids. I want them to outdo me. My job is to set the standard. We hear all the time that kids are a product of their upbringing. We get to create that. So I want to wish all of you incredible mamas a very, very happy Mother's Day. There are many of you that aren't even mothers yet. Build it now. I didn't build a plan B before I was a mom. I didn't think I needed it. I didn't think I wanted it. I thought I loved corporate life. I don't love anything more than spending time with my family. My greatest title is mama. Mom. They don't call me mama. I just say that. Okay. You can be an incredible mom and have a successful business. I'm happiest when I'm growing. I'm happiest when I'm pursuing passions outside of my kids. As moms, we need our own life too. Our babies eventually grow up. I'm feeling that now. I could not imagine being out of work for the last 20 years and now like being like, oh, I have time. I should go applying for jobs. And I'm not knocking it. It's just not me. And as much as I love my kids being around all the time, now Ryan and Bailey are going to come home from college and Tyler still lives here for the time being. So that my house is going to get crazy again, which is great, but they're not around all the time. I built a life of purpose and passion outside of my kids, but also alongside my kids. For me, it was the best mom decision that I ever made. You are strength. You are worthy. You can build anything that you put your mind to. 
You are molding your kids. Give them a really good show. Celebrate yourself this week. Go all in on your life. I love you, friends. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day.